Hey there, my name is Shane Craddock and this is the Inner Edge podcast where I share a different take on how to lead and live a sustainable high performance life. Over the course of different episodes, I'm going to challenge the belief that tension, stress and struggle are essential to success and creativity. My experience is that there's an easier way, there's a better way and indeed there's an essential way that we need to explore for the times that we live in. So let's go ahead, let's jump in and explore. Hello there, welcome to today's episode, uh, which if you're listening to when it comes out is I think on the 27th of December 2021. So it's kind of uh, in between the Christmas and the New Year's uh, celebrations. Um, And that's the reason I just thought I'd share this particular podcast with you, which is I'm calling the three uh, cracking questions to start a new a new year a new year with I can't speak today for some reason a new year with right so these three questions are great for to the start of a new year they're not the easiest questions to answer but I'm going to give them to you today um I'm a big fan of questions um and regardless of whether you're listening to this at the start of a new year or not they're great questions to have in your little toolkit for navigating life successfully I believe so um if you're uh, on my mailing list which you can join if you're not in it at shanecraddock.com. Um, you will be getting a complimentary version of something that I update every year for the last, I think, 11 years at this point that I call um, questions for a great year. Now, this year, it's going to be 22 questions for a great 2022. So there's a lot of questions, but they're all really humdingers. Um, and, I, and I just love like the right question with the right mindset at the right time can just unlock magic um, and my theme for this year is is win bigger. Win bigger to me is not just about getting more for greedy me. It's more about winning bigger in a way that enhances my overall quality of life and also makes an impact to the planet. That to me is ultimately winning bigger. So um, I'm going to give you three. And but just I just want you to consider this: that the right question, if it's contemplated by the right kind of mind or mindset, it's hugely invaluable. It's hugely invaluable. And I've just seen it so often in my own life and, and wrestling with questions that are not easy to answer as well. It's a very, very worthy pursuit because it will always unlock, it might take time, but it will always unlock um, gems, real gems. And I'd much rather stew on a question than stew on something negative in my life, to be honest with you. I've done too much of that in the past. Questions are a much better use of my time once they're focused on the right type of thing. So the first question, which might uh, surprise you, is this one is, Where did my life go so wrong? (laughs) They go, sorry, what? Have I done the right podcast? If I I say it more emotionally, where did my life go so wrong? No. Obviously, I'm joking. That's not the question. So disregard that. That's just Shane having fun with himself if nobody's listening. First question is what I call the true question. The true question is, what is true for me now? What is true for me now? In the past... Years ago, I think I, and I've seen this with my, some of my clients since, is that I used to make a mistake that would help hold me back unexpectedly, unconsciously, where I used to sometimes be carrying forward goals that I had set uh, um, through a different version of me. So it's almost like, you know, maybe I set a goal for a few years ago. I set a few years ago. Now I'm, I'm still thinking about achieving the same thing, but really it's not it's not really valuable to me or important to me anymore because I've changed. Like I'm not the same person today as I'm recording this that I was a year ago. I'm different. And certainly what I've seen even in the pandemic is that I think the pandemic has made people see things differently. They might be the same people, but their outlook, how they see life, how they see their work for a lot of people has changed. So once you've changed and you're seeing things differently, it means that you you will have different priorities. You know, if you're single and then you become married you're going to have different priorities so what's true for you now or if you've got children then what's true for you now you might want to spend more time with them or maybe you want to spend more less time with them i don't know um or say for example as some of you know you know uh, as i've shared recently that a close friend of mine Derek young passed suddenly only 51 um you know friend dies or somebody passes it can cause us to reevaluate different things sometimes that can be immediate sometimes it can take some time but if you ask the question, well, hang on now, what is true for me now with relation to work? What, what's true for me now in relation to my health, my relationships? What's really important to me now? What what do I want to do this year that I didn't want to do before? Um, it's a really powerful question, and I hope you can see that 
right? But I would certainly, these questions I'm giving you, the three today, are not ones that you kind of answer and move on. They're kind of questions that I keep on coming back to, like what's true for me now? Because what's true for me now could be very different to what even was true last week. As I say, something very uh, traumatic or severe or dramatic could happen today or tomorrow or the next week, and that, that could completely alter my view on the world and what's important. So what is true for you now? Either if uh, you're like a lot of people at this time of the year starting or coming into a new year and you're thinking about, God, I want to open my game for a plan or maybe stretch myself or think bigger or whatever, um, yours truly has spent many years uh, going down a lot of cul-de-sacs, wasting a lot of time on stuff that didn't work and then also occasionally find something that did work. And uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last <laughs> 25 years. And uh, I kind of created my own little workbooks and originally for myself, and then I gave them to clients, and then they seemed to kind of work quite well. And then we kind of created them into this one day workshop. Uh, one was for, uh, we call it Blueprint, for just personal clarity and focus. The other one was for Blueprint business owners, entrepreneurs. Anyway, I put them all online. So just in case, it might save you a lot of time. And also, when you buy them once, you have them forever at the moment. Anyway, that's the way we've set it up. Uh, Blueprint Personal, I'm going to leave the link in the show notes, and then Blueprint Entrepreneur, both of them will give you, I suppose, uh, a process to take you to clarity for personal and professional life, and then help you to, uh, that's a vision of clarity, and then chunk that backwards then from three years or four years back down to this year and even into the quarter, um, and with some tips and tools, I guess, that you can use along the way from my own experience. Anyway, they're both there. I'll leave them in the show notes and I'll throw in another one as well called uh, Success in the Year Ahead. which is a little bit cheaper than the other two. It's a one-hour audio. Anyway, that's me. If it strikes a chord to check it out, have a look. If not, anyway, that doesn't really matter, does it? Let's get back to the show. Bye. Second one is a very uh, practical type question. And um, I originally heard it from Keith Cunningham, kind of an American entrepreneur, but I think it's a brilliant question because you can use it in so many different ways, um, is what's the one thing if if consistently done over the next, and you can pick your own time frame, but let's just say, what's the one thing consistently done if, if it was done over the next 30 days would transform my work life or transform my personal life? Now you can pick 30 days, 60 days, not whatever you want to do. But what's the one thing if you did it consistently, say, for example, this year, it would have a massive effect on your work. Now, for me personally, maybe about four or five years ago, I realized that the answer to that question for me was to really improve my ability to manage my state of mind, my state of being. And that's just personal. That's why I'm so into obviously what I'm into. Um, But it kind of has been the top one for me over the last five years. And it's made a massive difference to me in my work and my personal life. But that's for me. It may not be the truth for you. Something else could be very important to you in your work or your personal life. Um, so what what is it for you? Sit with that question. And then the third question is what I call the Bucky question. And it's named after a guy called Buckminster Fuller, who, if you haven't heard of, was quite a, a profound thinker. He's He's dead now, but he had a massive impact on a lot of the forward-thinking people in, I guess, the personal and professional development movement. But he was so much more than that. He was uh, an engineer, a scientist, a mathematical thinker. He created and pioneered something called the geodesic geodesic domes. So if you know, for example, the uh, Eden Project over in Cornwall, who I've been lucky enough to work with on a couple of projects, they actually have these huge geodesic domes. Um, While we're checking out online, the Eden Project, I think it's one of the top five tourist attractions in the UK. And, but that dome was, the, the principle around it was designed by this guy. Anyway, very smart thinker, very profound thinker. But he asked this question. Um, he said, if the future of the world depended on how you are and what you do, then how would you be? What would you do? Now, this is a toughie, I think, but it's a biggie. It's one of my favorites. Um, if the future of the world, whoa. Heavy stuff there, Shane. But if the future of the world depended on how you are and what you do, okay, well then, how would you be? What would you do? And I think if you really sit with that kind of question, that will bring up or bring out 
answers that relate to purpose, that relate to a kind of a higher calling that will also direct you towards making a difference, I think, uh, to other people. You know, so that's what I call the Bucky question. Now, uh, as I said earlier on, if, you, if you're not on my mailing list, I would suggest um, popping onto it even for a little bit over the next while because that workbook, that free workbook called uh, Win Bigger, 22 Questions for a Great 2022, if you want that, it'll be on it. There's no hassle if you don't. I'd certainly uh, wrestle with these questions anyway. You're going to get some gems. You can always uh, send me what your thoughts are on this podcast today at support at shanecraddock.com, 1D, or indeed if there's any questions. So... <clears throat> You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. Other than that, if you're listening to this before the start of a new year, I wish you the very best for the year ahead. Um, if you've been a regular listener on these podcasts, thank you for staying with me. Thank you for asking questions by email. Thank you for sending me your comments. It all helps. And uh, you, you do have influence over what I'm talking about here if you're a regular listener. So please do send me an email again or maybe uh, ping me on social media, even though, to be honest with you, the email is probably better. Anyway, so in conclusion... You know, can you spend time with those questions? When will you spend time with those questions? Ideally for me, you would take a little walk, maybe get a, afterwards get a nice cup of something, a hot chocolate, a tea, a coffee, whatever, and sit with those questions on a pad and doodle them down and say, right, what are my answers to them? And, and not looking for the first answer that comes, but almost recording your answers in a notebook and letting yourself kind of drill for oil, the oil that will make your life and your work even better for the year to the year ahead. So in conclusion, making time to think about questions, the right kind of questions, questions that matter to you. It's always worth it. Thanks for being with me. Bye-bye.